Just about a year ago, I fell down the gouache rabbit hole. And I've had a lot of fun trying out different brands and types of gouache. So far, I have reviewed two major brands of acrylic gouache on this channel. So Flat Matte Acrylics by Golden and Acrylla by Whole Line. So Flat has the most matte and opaque finish I have seen so far. It's gorgeous. But I don't like the jars it comes in or the fact that the paint needs to be stirred prior to every use. Holbein is beautiful too, but the tubes are so tiny and it is super pricey. Both of these paints are a lot of fun to use, but I want to investigate all of the alternatives. For this video, I'm going to be reviewing another popular brand of acrylic gouache, Liquitex. Like most gouache, Liquitex claims to be matte, flat, and opaque. I'll be assessing those and other qualities, and at the end of the video, I'll be assigning Liquitex a letter grade. After comparing the different options online, I decided to purchase the 12-piece essential set, as opposed to building my own custom palette of colors. I also purchased one other color separately, this cadmium free orange, but we'll come back to that later. The bottles in this set are pretty small, at 0.74 ounces each, and had I opted to build my own palette of colors, I would have had to buy these much larger and much more expensive 2 ounce bottles. You can't buy this smaller sample size individually, so if you just want to sample a decent range of colors before committing, I think this is the most economical way to do it. At the time I recorded this video, this set was going for about $55 online. Whereas this similar set of Acrylla by Holbein was going for about $82. Neither one of these sets are what I would call cheap. Keep in mind that these are both considered professional grade, but Liquitex is clearly less expensive. After examining the range of colors and pigments in the set, I was happy to discover that it contained most of the basic colors I prefer working with. The 12 colors in this set are primary yellow, scarlet, primary red, Dioxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Primary Blue, Emerald Green, Viridian Hue, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Titanium White, and Mars Black. One of the first things that caught my attention were these negative reviews online saying that Liquitex dries to a satin finish. For an acrylic gouache, this is a pretty big deal. The matte finish is the major draw, so that was one of the very first things I wanted to look into. I started by making some swatches of each of the paint colors on some inexpensive watercolor paper. Specifically, I was looking to test the consistency and uniformity of the paint. Is it streaky, opaque, or translucent? Is the paint finish uniform? Are the brush strokes visible? It's tempting when you get a new set of paints to skip this step, but I feel it's a really important exercise to go through. Paint swatches let me sample the colors, but more importantly, it also affords me an opportunity to assess the range of possible colors, the tinting strength, and other factors. At a minimum, I feel that swatches should be at least an inch to get a good feel of the color and characteristics of the paint.
I also sampled the tinting strength of each of the colors using a 50-50 ratio of whites. I also like to make these larger 3 inch paint chips. I feel that it gives me the best idea of how the paint performs. What I noticed at this stage is that the performance of the Liquitex gouache was quite variable. Some colors and pigments performed better than others, which wasn't really shocking to me given the natural variations of pigments. Some pigments are just naturally suited better for gouache than others. This burnt sienna was one that I felt turned out really beautiful. It came out absolutely matte and opaque. The brush strokes are virtually invisible and the color is really rich and intense. In, in general, I feel that burnt sienna is one of those really underappreciated colors and this is one of the prettiest I have seen. For me, it was a 10 out of 10. And this cadmium free orange that I purchased separately was another that came out really beautiful. The finish was nice and consistent. But on the flip side, some of these colors were kind of a disappointment. This yellow oxide came out very blotchy, and this viridian was also quite streaky. And while it's not unexpected, it's a bit disappointing. In general, the opacity after only one coat was not that great. The colors that performed best on opacity were the Burnt Sienna, Dioxazine Purple, and Mars Black. And of course, with the addition of white, the tints turned out nice and opaque. And I thought they came out especially pretty. And the shades, of course, also turned out very opaque. During the swatching process, while I uncovered issues with coverage and opacity, I found the finish to be overall consistently matte. But I did notice some reflection on a couple of colors that I judged to be minor. This Mars Black, for example, does seem to have a bit of a streaky and shiny finish. You can see the light reflecting off of the high points of the paint. And this primary blue is also a bit shiny in places. This is why I like to make these larger swatches, because this is something that I may have missed on my smaller one inch swatches. To assess the range of colors, I made this color chart where I combined each of the colors in the set in a 50-50 ratio. The colors across the diagonal represent the pure color straight from the tube. In terms of selection, I thought it was a good range. There's a good selection of greens. The violets are really nice. You can get a nice turquoise and teal from the Viridian. Now this set doesn't have a magenta, so it's a bit limited there, but this primary red gets you fairly close and it also produces some nice deep crimsons. So for most situations, I'd say it's a strong selection. After I finished making swatches, it was time to test the paints in real-world painting applications. I had this page in my sketchbook that I had just doodled some flowers in, so I wanted to save the page and just paint over that. I started out with a super rough sketch I made the night before. Like many painters, I take a lot of my inspiration from nature. I tend to paint lots of florals, still lifes, and landscapes. And unsurprisingly, this first painting was inspired by the environment around me. 
Currently citrus is in season and I have tons of lemons, oranges, and other citrus fruits in my garden. The inspiration for this sketch came to me as I was outside picking the lemons from my tree. This really beautiful light was shining through the leaves and it was casting this almost lacy kind of shadow on my hand. I just found it so intriguing and luckily I had my phone with me, so I took some video. I wasn't really planning on painting it at the time, I just found it interesting. Later when I was trying to decide what to paint for this video, my mind kept coming back to the lacy looking shadows. My goal with this wasn't really to paint the hand in a photorealistic way. I view it more as a loose sketch. I also wanted to take the time to practice skin tones, which I don't really devote enough time to. I wanted the sunlit part of the skin to be quite warm, so I mixed that color using quite a bit of this scarlet which is an orangey red. For the shadows, I wanted a dynamic contrast, so I mixed in some dioxazine purple for those areas. Dioxazine purple tends to dominate other colors and mixtures, it's a very strong pigment, so it provided me the bold contrast I was looking for. You'll notice I'm painting this in a lot of thin, watery layers. Kind of like watercolors. With gouache, I really enjoy exploring the contrast between watery layers and thick, opaque layers. So in this case, the transparency you see is a stylistic choice not a reflection necessarily on the paint's opacity. We'll see some more opaque paintings coming up. For a photorealistic painting, I would generally spend between four to five hours on a painting this size. So what you are looking at here is more of an unfinished look for me. Some of the colors are a bit more bold, like these greens, and it's a little abstract in ways. I didn't really budget enough time to reach my normal standard of realism, but I thought in its unfinished state it was still kind of interesting, so I thought I would share it anyway. Hopefully, if nothing else, this gives you a little insight into how I build and progress through layers, and the time it takes me to reach various stages in a painting. For the second painting, I decided to keep with the citrus theme. For this painting, I picked a mandarin off of my tree. Although I do work off of reference photos the majority of the time, and I think it's a great tool, I also try to make an effort to paint directly from life on occasion. So for this painting, that's exactly what I did. I think the most challenging part of painting direct from life is keeping your perspective consistent. If you tilt your head too much in one direction, you can subtly shift your perspective without realizing and introduce some inconsistencies that way. So it's an interesting challenge. I ended up making some errors and I had to paint over some of my work to correct course. This is one of the reasons why I love acrylic paints. If you make a mistake, it's just so much easier to paint it out and start over again. Another reason why I wanted to paint a mandarin was because I wanted to showcase this cadmium-free orange that I mentioned earlier. You'll recall that this color is not part of the essential set, it's a color I purchased independently. Something I appreciate about Liquitex particularly is their line of cadmium-free colors. The advantage of cadmium-based colors is that they are particularly vibrant, 
but cadmium is also a heavy metal that carries legitimate toxicity concerns. It's also been banned from most paint and many consumer goods. One exception, of course, is artist paints and pigments. And most artist paint lines include cadmium. You can see the difference here on these swatches. I tried mixing orange with yellow and scarlet, and again with primary yellow and primary red. Both combinations obviously produce orange, but compared to true cadmium, they are a bit muddy looking. If we look at the cadmium-free orange, we can see that it's much brighter than the oranges I mixed. The main concern with cadmium-based pigments is exposure through inhalation of the pigment. So this refers to exposure from the raw powdered pigment, from sanding, or from spray painting. So those are all things that you want to avoid with cadmium. I do use cadmium-based pigments occasionally, so by bringing this up I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm just trying to highlight something I appreciate about Liquitex. This particular line of gouache by Liquitex is cadmium free without compromising on vibrancy, which is something I really appreciate. Whenever I do reviews like this, I always feel like I need to make at least a few different paintings before I can speak with any authority on the product. So I made one more painting. This particular painting was one that I did without any reference at all beyond my own memory and imagination. I don't know why, but I was just really craving um, one of those cherry danishes all day long, but I didn't actually have one. And I don't really know why, but I just wanted it so much I could picture it in my head very, very clearly. But instead of giving in to the temptation, I decided to paint it instead, which overall was probably healthier for me. The painting actually turned out much better than I expected it to, considering I painted it without reference. It's been a long-standing goal of mine to build my visual memory and imagination, so it made me really happy that it turned out fairly realistic looking. So in the actual finished paintings, I didn't see too much evidence of the satin finish that people were complaining of, except for this tiny blotch of paint here on this painting, which this was the Mars black again. And even then, it was really hard to see, and overall it wasn't really very noticeable. I do think that the consistency of the paint could be improved. But to me, it is clearly a matte finish. The caveat to that statement is that I've only tested 13 colors out of the 50 in the range. So it's possible that some of the other colors have issues with sheen. Something else I wanted to comment on was the packaging. Generally speaking, I don't like paint in jars. I prefer tubes. The nice thing about tubes is that you don't have this trapped pocket of air slowly drying out the paints. Also pouring paints out of jars is just messy and annoying. That being said, I have to give Liquitex credit for what I consider to be a thoughtful jar design, as far as jars go. I like that this particular paint has a nozzle at the top for squeezing out the paint, so that I don't have to pour or scoop it out. So that was nice. People also often ask about the odors of the paints, so I'd like to just briefly address that. As far as odors go, I can't say I noticed any strong or overwhelming odor. I'd say the smell is typical of acrylic paint. As a point of reference, I would judge the odor to be just a tiny bit stronger than Liquitex Basics, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. 
but again, that's just my perspective. Now that I've thoroughly tested the product, it's time to grade Liquitex. The first criteria we'll be looking at is opacity. The paint has good opacity in some colors. Other colors are a bit streaky. In tints, the opacity of all colors was pretty good. So out of five stars, I will give it a three. The next criteria we'll look at is flatness or the self-leveling properties of the paint. For this one, I give it four stars. Next up is matte finish. Some colors like the Mars Black and Primary Blue did appear to have a minimal amount of sheen in a few areas. Overall though, across the range of colors I sampled, the finish was matte and flat. Now I haven't tested all the colors, so it's entirely possible that there are more colors that have issues with sheen consistency. But based on what I personally observed, I'm going to give them four stars. The next criteria is range of colors and vibrancy. I felt the colors were vibrant and pigmented, so I'm going to give them five stars. The last category is the overall result or aesthetic of the finished painting. In other words, does the paint produce what looks like a gouache painting? When I compare my finished paintings, I think it's really difficult to tell the different brands apart. If I hadn't personally painted these, I don't think I could tell the brands apart. The end result is really similar. So I have to give them five stars on this one. So tallying it all up, I gave Liquitex 21 out of 25 possible stars. So that comes out to 84%. And my final grade is a solid B. If you are looking for a lower cost alternative to Holbein's Acrylic Wash, I would say this is a good alternative. But only if you are willing to tolerate some inconsistencies in opacity and sheen. Overall, I liked the paint. I hope this information was helpful to you. If you'd like to see more acrylic gouache brand reviews like this one, be sure to check out this playlist. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!